Hello, welcome to Biblify. Today we will discuss about the prophecy regarding the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. All right, let's get started. Okay, as you know that before the Holy Temple in Jerusalem were built, actually they are the prototype of the Holy Temple, which is Tabernacle of Moses, which is uh, uh, built in the wilderness when the children of Israel are coming out from the Egypt and trying to get a new land in the Canaan. They are uh, in the uh, they are scattered in the wilderness for around 40 years, right? So during this period of time, Moses raised up and then he built the tabernacle in wilderness to worship God, right? And then uh, what is happening there? That will be somewhere around 1250 BC or 1450 BC, the exact date we do not know, right? So, um, and then after that, there are some smaller proto temple that is built like the temple of Gilgal, Sema, uh, Sheikh, etc., Kibion temple. However, the king of David, basically the one, started to capture the Jerusalem in 1000 BC. And then after that, he built uh, trying to build the temple, but finally he failed, right? And then it, basically his descendant, predecessor, is Solomon, who is finally able to construct the temple, which is in 968 BC. And then uh, was then uh, Hezekiah finally reformed the temple in uh, 715 BC. And then finally Nebuchadnezzar is destroyed destroyed the temple in 568 or 64 BC. Yeah. Then during this period of the first temple, actually there are several uh, prophets that is lived during that time, especially like uh, Isaiah that predicted the salvation to Jerusalem and the coming of the Messiah, and Jeremiah that predicted the judgment against the Judea and Jerusalem, and then Ezekiel that predicted the destruction of Jerusalem and restoration of the Israel. During the first temple period, Israel is basically an independent nation, just uh, the kingdom of Israel. However, the Israel is divided into uh, two, which is the north and south, which is uh, Israel on the north and Judea on the south. Right. And then finally, they fell into Babylonian, where uh, Nebuchadnezzar did destroy the temple. And then finally, they have to go to exile, right? And then finally, uh, Zerubbabel, after the exile, they return back from the exile, right? Babylon exile, then Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple in 515 BC and constructed the second temple. This uh, second temple period started, right? And then, however, that uh, Jerusalem is no longer an in, in, uh, independent nation because they are under the ruler or several nations, right? A Persian ruler, Hellenistic ruler, which is uh, Ptolemaic under the Christian rule. And uh, they become slightly independent under the Maccabean rule after their revolt against the Greece, right? And then after that, they fell again under the Roman rule, which is finally Herod the king is uh, doing the renovation of the temple in 1915 BC, which is still part of the second temple. And then finally in 70 AD, Nero destroyed the second temple. Uh, during this period of time, there are several prophets that live, like Zechariah, Nehemiah, Malachi, etc. Right? So we we'll take a look on more detail about this first temple, second temple, and also there are talking about the Zerubbabel temple, which is the third temple later on. I'm sorry, it's the second temple. Right, so we will discuss more detail on the next page. Right, again, we started on the Moses. During Moses' period of time, right, this is uh, mentioned in the book of Exodus 26 28, which is around 1450 BC to 1250 BC. The temple itself basically is a proto temple, right? So it is not a temple, but it is uh, something that is, can be moved around. So this is a portable temple, right? So the tabernacle is built in the wilderness by the Israel around 1450 BC after they were freed from the Egyptian slavery. 
and the tabernacle was the first temple dedicated to God and the first resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. It served as a place of the worship and sacrifice during the Israel. It is 40 years in the desert and while conquering the land of Canaan. But the three parts of the temple actually divided into three parts, outer court, holy place, and holy of holies. The outer court is actually symbolized our body, the holy place represents our soul, and the holy of holies represents our spirit, which is the dwelling place of God. And then here are the all the part of the temple, which is the courtyard or the altar, and then the holy place and the holy of holies. And they give the the consecrate the offerings on the altar, but there are frozen altar here, then they give the offerings and then after that before the high priest can go inside the temple they have to wash, right? Basically this is our prayer to God. And then the Holy of Holies they have the lampstand and also the bread of offerings. And then they also have some uh, table of shoe, shoe bread right the lampstand and also incense altar and then in the holy of holies there is uh, in the middle there is an ark right which is basically symbolized the uh, Jesus Christ himself right, right. the second uh, the first temple finally was built by Solomon which is also called Hezekiel or Josiah temple which is uh, 968 BC uh, until 584 BC right uh, inside this uh, temple it is erected by the king solomon to replace the tabernacle that is uh, the house of the ark and covenant and the temple itself will complete was completed in 957 bc after seven years of labor but it was destroyed by the babylonian in 587 bc okay the three part of the temple represent the triune god right the outer court which is the outer court where they have the upper court and the altar and the great uh, great courtiers so they have the labor and the bronzes here so basically uh, it is jesus christ that died on the cross as our sacrifice so they are giving the sacrifice here on the altar is that actually jesus christ died on the cross as our sacrifice okay and then the whole the high priests they can after they are giving the offering and they wash their uh, their shoes right they were this uh, food basically they can enter the holy time uh, holy place which is uh, uh, which is uh, represent the holy spirit that give us life light to our prayer so we have two parts here this is the bread this is our food right christ is our food and also the the incense here we give the incense and it's our prayers given to God. And finally, we can enter into the Holy of Holies, uh, God the Father, who is uh, who is the creator of the universe. Uh, we cannot face the Holy God without, without uh, Jesus Christ, right? So again, here is the second temple of the, this, uh, this is uh, known as the Herodes Temple, right? So it's a, uh, also known as the Zerubbabel Temple, which is mentioned in the Book of Ezra 3 and Haggai 2. Okay, the inner court of the Herod Temple was accessible by 10 gates. So they have several gates because this gate is actually the gate uh, that is added by the Herod Herods during the time, which is only the Jews could enter, right? Inside there were several chambers and courtyards where the sacrifices were made. At one end was the holy place, and the two-room sanctuary uses, uh, used by Jewish priests. The expansive building project of Herod's second temple and Temple Mount was completed in approximately around 62 until 64 uh, AD, and finally to be destroyed a couple years later by the Nero in 70 AD. Right, okay, this part they have a bigger courtyard, actually it's a courtyard here, which is the which is the separate woman courtyard, and then there is a priest courtyard. So the holy place itself is under this under this building, right? Uh, where table of lantern and table of sacrifices are outside here, right? Okay, so let's get started on the third temple. Okay, the third temple basically never existed. 
So these are just mentioned, the temple that is mentioned on the book of Ezekiel 40 and 48. So this is actually the vision given to the Ezekiel from God. And this vision, I believe, will be used by the Israel later on to build the third temple, which is something, some, sometime in the future. So the outer crowd actually represents the earth. The holy place represents the universe, and the holy of holies represents the eternal heaven, which is the dwelling place of God. Right. So the Ezekiel temple is actually shown by a vision of the Ezekiel in of the third temple in 572 BC. Right. Just year after the first temple was destroyed, and before the second temple was built. So this is when the Israel is under the exile, right? Babylon and exile. Through the destruction of the second temple, uh, occurring in 1780, a third temple has not yet been constructed until today. So, yeah, here is the 3D model of the third temple. It was built, it's much larger in the size, right? Uh, they have the temple and the altar, which is here. However, we have larger outer court at the building in the western end is on this side, right? Okay, now the problem is that after the temple is destroyed in 70 AD by Nero, there is no more temple until now, right? And uh, it is very difficult I mean, the exact, to pinpoint the exact location of the temple because, as you know, the Mount Temple as today or known as Haram al-Sharif actually uh, has been occupied by the Muslim, right? By the Dome of the Rock and uh, uh, some most, right? So the whole area here actually considered as the temple area. However, it is very difficult to pinpoint the exact location, whether the, the temple itself is under Dome of the Rock or under uh, some most or under the other location. Yeah, the, there are old city here of Jerusalem that, that is, can be visited by tourists. However, the green zone is only available for Muslim. And then the western wall is where the Jews can, can, uh, can cry and mourn about the destruction of the temple, right? So even though until now there are different versions of the exact location of the temple. The first uh, version is actually from the secular Jews, which is the Jews that is coming from the diaspora, from returning back from many countries, right? Those Jews basically I uh, believe that the temple actually sitting somewhere under the Dome of the Rock. However, uh, right, there are another version of uh, Orthodox Jews, right, that is believed that the temple actually is not part of this uh, temple mount. The temple itself lies underneath on the southern part of the uh, of this uh, temple mount region. So, this uh, and they believe that this region is actually part of the Fort Antonio, so especially a fortress where the soldiers of the Roman Empire house have the housing there to guard the temple during the hero time. So this uh, this place is actually a very large place because it housed 10,000 people, so 10,000 soldiers, legion, a legion of the soldiers. However, for the secular Jews, they believe the Fort Antonia or Fortress Antonia is a small part here. There is no such thing as the house of the soldiers, right? Right. However, from uh, some uh, of the excavation being done, finally they found that the part of the court of the temple is actually under this uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque, right? So here are the overall view of the old Jerusalem city. So here are the upper city of Zion, and here are Tyropion, right? And this is the Bet Bezitsa, the new city, right? And this is the where the location of the Heroes Fortress. And then the Fortress Antonia is actually upon the hill here, right? So uh, for the Orthodox Jews, they believe the temple itself is basically on the southward direction, just uh, somewhere in the Kidron Valley or near the somewhere near the city of David, right? In the near the spring of Gihon. This is the exact location of the temple that we believe, right? However, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to find out because after it, uh, excavation and it, uh, finally it's 
cannot find anything because the Bible already says that Matthews is already predicted in Matthews. 13 says, do you, do you see all this great building? replied Jesus. No one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. So this is the exact situation today. Not any single stone of the temple are stood upon the other stone. One is destroyed by Nero Caesar in 7080. So it's a total destruction. So it's basically very difficult to find the exact location. Right? Temple has been fully destroyed, right? And then uh, it is part of much larger complex called Temple Mount. Herod itself had renovated the temple and built Fort Antonia to house 10,000 soldiers, as I mentioned just now. So the Fort Antonia is the fortress here. And during Solomon's time, it was just a small citadel, but it grew up much uh, larger than the temple itself. On top of this Fort Antonio, that was built the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. So, however, the temple is here. The cart of the temple is part of this uh, temple mount itself. The exact location of the temple should be southward direction, which is southward direction of the Fort Antonio, as mentioned here. Okay. Uh, all right. Next. Okay. Here is the prophecy timeline that is mentioned in the Bible, right? As you can see here. Actually, the temple is constructed in 968 BC, right? And then finally, it's destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in 584 BC. And then Zerubbabel rebuilt it again in 518 BC, comes the second temple. And finally, Nero destroyed in 70 AD. However, there are uh, some verses in the Bible called in Revelation 11 to 8. But exclude the courtyard outside the temple. Do not trample it. Uh, do not measure it because it was given to other nations. And they will trample the holy city for 42 months, right? So it is mentioned there that the uh, temple courtyard will be trampled underfoot and the Jerusalem will be given to over the nation for 42 months. If you can't count 42 months, it's basically 42 months times 30 days, because one month is 30 days. Multiply this number is 1,260 years. So if you see the history, since the upsize mosque is built in 707 AD until Jerusalem is returned to Israel is 1967 AD, there are 1,060 years exactly. So this is a mysterious. This is the the prophecy of the Bible that has, has been revealed and not many people realize it, right? So this is uh, amazing and this is wonderful. All right, but God itself, Jesus, and still, uh, still faithful in basically fulfilling their prophecy, his prophecy, right? So again, if you take a look on another prophecy in the book of Daniel 8, 14, right, it is says that it will take 2,300 evening and morning, and then the sanctuary will be properly restored. So it takes 2,300 evening and morning, which is 2,300 days, for the sanctuary, which is the holy temple, to be restored. So if we count the temple will be destroyed in 70 AD and we plus 2300 uh, years on it that will be 2370 AD that the third temple might be rebuilt again and if, if you remember what Jesus says in John 2 19 Jesus answered to them destroy this temple and I will raise up again in three days even though Jesus said uh, this temple is actually his referring to his own body where he basically resurrected from the dead in three days. This is already fulfilled. But then this is a non-literal translation, right? Uh, I believe that there will be another literal translation. The literal meaning of this, basically the temple itself will be rebuilt in three days. Which is the holy temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt in three days. If you consider the technology of uh, modern technology of construction now, 
it is really possible that uh, they can use a knockdown methodology, uh, methodology to rebuild the temple in three days. So everything are prepared first, and then finally, it will they will rebuild again. Everything just like the Lego, you can just knock knock it down on top of the other, and everything will stand up in three days. And the third temple it will be rebuilt again in 2037 AD. Okay, the counting of 2370 AD is a bit uh, difficult because some historians say that the, the Nero is destroying the temple is around 68 AD. So we, we know that will be somewhere around 2368 AD or 2370 AD. The third temple will be rebuilt. And finally, in the end of time begin, and the Antichrist will come, become the world leader of the world government. This will become the main leader. Or the president of the world, then whatever you name it, or the Caesar or the king, he will be sitting on the temple, and finally the desolation will start it, right? So then Jesus Christ will come. We don't know exactly when will be the time, but that will be somewhere around this period of time. All right, thank you very much for watching. And that's all our video today and stay tuned for our next video and please subscribe below and give some comment okay see you next for other video bye